Skavers, welcome back my friends to the second episode of my Skaven Army blog project. Yes, fresh meat for the Empire! In today's episode we are building a warp lightning cannon from scratch. Oh yes. So what are we what are we talking about in today's episode? Well, in the past I have owned the Games Workshop Warp Lightning Cannon kit. I've assembled it. Um, I never had one of the metal ones. I, I vividly recall never having one of those. I did actually convert one to have an Empire Great Cannon, like the barrel of the actual Warp Lightning Cannon, to be that, because that was quite in keeping with the traditional look. But for the life of me, can't find it. I probably sold it at some point. As far as I'm concerned, it's gone forever. So this video is all about making a brand new one from scratch. So let's jump straight into this. So the actual barrel bit that I'm using here is from this Sector Mechanicus Warhammer 40k terrain set. Um, I got it as part of the Warhammer Imperium magazine. I believe you can still get it on the GW website. It's part of the, the big skull generator thing. I'll throw an image of it on the screen. Wonderful bit. And from physical memory of what the Warp Lightning Cannon used to look like, it's the right size. The barrel is the right size. Um, it just needs some adapting, shall we say. And as you can see here, it so nicely fits onto the correct size base. Although this one has got a bit of a, a ding in the front of it, but I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that. You know, I'll, I'll straighten that with a pair of pliers and a file. So... Like with my previous video, I'm not going to show you a laborious step-by-step -step on how I assemble this thing. It's more a, it's more of a, a talk through, just sort of going on the, the highlights, because ultimately there's only so much time in the day. But at the same point, it is quite interesting when you're scratch building something to try and get as much authentic GW stuff from that faction as you can. And th the thing is, I actually had leftover wheels and parts from the Warp Lightning kit, as you can see, as well as this big red toy wheel that I'd sort of previously designed for like an Orc faction customization thing that just never came to fruition. Like looking at the, the little guys here that could fit on there, you know, I've got bits from the Warp Lightning kit. I believe these panels, these wooden plank bits, they're from that kit as well. And it's the kind of stuff that you chuck in your bits box, you're too desperately afraid to actually use at any point. But you think, well, well, why not? This is the right time. Now, I've only got so many wheels, so why not try and combine these tracked parts from the uh, goodness, what's it called? It's like the Skitari um, Servitor gun guys. I'll chuck an image on the screen because they're they're quite nicely in scale, nice and technical looking. This is going to be a very sort of hyper technologically advanced warp lightning cannon while still keeping that sort of steampunk aesthetic. Now, I need to do something about the back end of this gun, because right now the barrels are just sort of going into nothing. So at first I thought about using this little medicine bottle for, like, cats. I thought about using that because it's plastic. It became easier to use these um, e-liquid bottle caps that I'd previously saved from the recycling bin, just because they're about the right size. And I plan on covering this in matchsticks and lollipop sticks and bits of balsa wood anyway, so I don't need to worry too much about the ridges and so on. I just need them to be roughly the right scale. And this is the thing, as I said, I'm not going through an exhaustive step-by-step because ultimately you don't need to see me struggling to glue wheels to a to a frame that I've made out of bits of plastic tube and, and matchstick. Because ultimately you can kind of look at this and figure it out. It's not that hard. It's just using fundamental A shapes and things like that. But honestly, at this point, I'm pretty happy. I've got the look down pretty much pat. But now it comes to the detailing. And this is where things like making your own warp stone crystals out of bits of old games workshop sprue it's a really useful technique to have i'm not one for covering warp stone on everything because it is meant to be rare in the warhammer universe it is meant to be something that they use as currency that they fight over that they fight wars for and it does have a purpose in the universe it is an energy source it is radioactive it is all this stuff but as you can see, I've made a little cluster of three of them, stuck them in a little bit of plastic tube and stuck it on the side there to fill where that Sector Mechanicus logo used to be. 
and it just it just works so nicely because what we are doing is we are tying this into the universe like using these little skaven shields these little clan rat shields to cover over what again used to have the little mechanicum logo on the side of the the tracks again it just fits it into the faction it helps it fit into the warhammer fantasy universe and that is what because it always gets me because you see hundreds and hundreds of videos about how to make skaven fit in 40k and, and all this but you don't see so much like conversion videos on how to take 40k bits and use them in warhammer fantasy for skaven and that's kind of what this is we are kit bashing mechanica stuff to make a warp lightning cannon in a lot of ways it's it's pretty fitting so let's actually talk about the little rat boys that are going to sit on this war machine um as you saw earlier i've got that guy with the pulling the lever to fire the gun and then i've got this rat who is he's originally a metal uh, warlock engineer model but i've long since lost his pistol arm so we're just going to improvise that with a dab of super glue and this old um, Warhammer Fancy dwarf pistol hand from the Ranger slash Thunderers kit because there's nothing there's nothing quite like sticking it to the dwarves with a bit of stolen technology and little stolen trophies and medals and, and things that it's like oh that's a grudging right there how dare you love it absolutely love it so again it's coming along we're starting to actually detail it up now with little rivets and bolts and things like that and we are, you get to this point of a project and it is the funnest bit because the actual base makeup of the build, you've, you've ironed all that out. Like we've got the platforms for our guys to stand on and now it is riveting. And this is by far one of the fiddliest bits in any project. But I use this, how thick is it? I use this um, 0.35 of an inch or 0.88 millimeter rod for the actual rivet work and it is tiny it is tiny stuff i use i use super glue but i use like quite a liquid super glue not the gel stuff and i'll saturate a little area whether it's the wood or the plastic wherever it is and then using my craft knife you'll see in a minute i just pick up a dot of of the plastic rods the little rivet that i've made and i just tap that on there this is the most focused that you have to be in the build because it is it's hard it is hard at this point to do this but it is the most satisfying and it does tie the build in from being something that you've made out of matchsticks and and bits of balsa wood and bits of rubbish it actually ties it into that universe it is the kind of detail that you don't get on you know just any old plastic toy that you buy in a shop this is the stuff that you you do by hand that that elevates it because all games workshop parts have rivets and spikes and so on so you want to recreate that here it is glued to the base and honestly other than some extra little details like an empire shield on the back or a little giant rat on the on the base that's about it for the build now, same as before, I'm not going to bore you with how I did the paint job. I think it's it's worth pointing out that these big kind of builds, they're not as intimidating to paint as you may think. And I appreciate my photos look super washed out. It's just a sad matter of fact for the lighting. It is actually a lot shinier than it looks when you see it in real life but the actual once you get you know spray it black get a layer of brown paint on there all of a sudden picking out these individual different textures and colors it's really quite simple and i mean don't get me wrong you paint the crew members separately you don't just chuck them on there and try and paint around you know if you're doing fine detail work on an old metal model you want to do that separate and then glue it on after and the only exception to that being the giant rat, because the giant rat is three colours. It's pink, it's brown, and it's silver with the chains that are on it. Honestly, I am happy with how this turned out. It has been a long time since I painted a big Skaven war machine. Well, a decade, in fact. And considering I have owned multiple warp lightning cannons over the years, I've never actually finished and based one. So to have that done, to have sawdust and sand on the base and paint it and get some static grass on there and some little bits of dried lichen and all this stuff, 
it is a good feeling. I can't recommend doing this kind of hobby build enough because it is great fun just making something from the bits that you've got lying around that looks the business, that looks the part, that fits the universe while at the same time it's yours. This is wholly unique to my, my force, my faction. There are many warp lightning cannons out there, but this one is mine. And it is, you know, there are little bits that I would change, I think, if I was to do this again. Um, first and foremost has to be the little dials that you see on the Sector Mechanicus um, steam vent uh, chimneys, because those dials are all at a 90 degree angle, because this thing is meant to be pointing straight up into the air, because they're chimneys. And because I've laid it flat, the dials are all now on the side and they look a bit wrong. But at the same time, that isn't, you know, devastating to the build. Like that's a that's a simple little thing that you can just sort of look over. Same as same as all the, the wood panelling and so on. Like it looks really dark in the video. It's not actually that dark in real life, it's a lot lighter. I do like to get variation when I'm painting wood because the reality is not all trees are the same. In the same way, not all metals are the same. I try and get a mix of rusty metal and brass and shiny steel and all this different texture going on whenever I paint a build like this. What would I do differently if I was to build a second warp lightning cannon? Because the nice thing is I still have another spare chimney set, so I could very well do that. I think... I would take off the second exhaust that's on top because that's not really needed. It looks cool, but it doesn't really add too much to the build. It is a big build. You only really need so many warp lightning cannons in your army. I do like the fact that I made this one tracked, although I don't think... If I had more big wheels, I would just use big wheels. This is more a needs-must situation of where I had some but not enough to to kind of bear the weight of the of the the boiler the engine at the back as it were all in all it's been a blast i like mixing old with new i like mixing you know old metal models with new plastics um and they paint up differently but they paint up really nicely when you do give them that unified color scheme my army color is yellow i've got a lot of yellow models in this force so to have some green representing clan scryer oh my goodness it's a breath of fresh air but yeah there you go my force my army for warhammer the old world and warhammer 8th edition now stands at a battle standard bearer a warlock engineer a plague priest and a warp lightning cannon what can I say? I'm going to have to do some other units. I'm going to have to do some some core choices because I think right now, well, as fun as it would be to make an army entirely out of artillery, maybe not the most practical. Anyway, thank you for watching, my brothers, and I will see you all in the next episode. Thank you and goodbye.